Hey guys, I have here a Mellanox ConnectX4 100 gigabit network interface card. 100 gigabits. This is model number MCX455A. You can see there it's got a single QSFP28 port. It's a PCI 3X16 bus size. Now this is a dual purpose card. It has two modes. You can either use it for InfiniBand or standard ethernet. We'll be using this for standard ethernet in some upcoming videos. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to update the firmware on this controller. I'm also going to show you how to switch it from InfiniBand to ethernet mode. All right, so I've got a session open to my server here. And there are three pages here on the NVIDIA website we'll be referencing throughout this video. NVIDIA does own a Mellanox, for those of you who aren't aware. The first page is a getting started, which provides most of the commands we'll be using. Uh, the second page is the firmware tools download, and the third page is the firmware download. I will link to all three of these pages down in the video description, as I realize the font on these particular websites is very tiny and probably difficult to read in the video. So the first thing we'll do is install a few supporting packages. At minimum, you'll want kernel devel. Uh, you'll also want PCI utils. Uh, you shouldn't need USB utils, however, it will prevent a warning message from being displayed when you run some of the commands, and I didn't want to see that warning. And then uh, lib IB verbs is for the InfiniBand options. As you see, I have all of these packages installed already. So next, we'll verify that our card is indeed installed and detected. We'll do an LSPCI grep Mellanox. Helps if you spell it correctly. And you see it's labeled as an InfiniBand controller, but it says the Connect X-4. Uh, so we're going to head over to the web browser in our firmware tools, the MFT, and download that application. And you see the latest version here is 4.22.1. It is an LTS or a long-term support release. So we're on Linux, we're on RPM. This is uh, Oracle Linux or Red Hat Linux. X64. I'm going to copy that link address. We're going to do a wget and post that URL. Next we can do tar xvf to extract it, MFT. Okay cd into that directory. Uh, so you'll see there is an install.sh script. All we have to do is run that, dot slash install. It's gonna go through a number of checks and will also let you know if you're missing any supporting packages. It does install a kernel module as well. Um, so once you are completed with your configuration, if you don't want that kernel module, you see there is an install.sh script you can run as well. Get out of that. We're gonna go back to our web browser here. And now we are on the firmware downloads page. Uh, so you'll see the latest version is 12.28.2006. This card is the MCX455A-ECAT. If you're not sure, that part number should be printed on your card directly on the back of the PCB. So right-click, copy link again, wget, and we'll extract that the same way. That's a zip file, so we need to use unzip. So now if we do an LL, you can see we have our firmware file and we have our firmware tools. So first we're going to update the firmware and then we'll worry about changing it from InfiniBand to Ethernet mode. So to begin, we'll run MST start. It's going to detect your cards. And then we can run MST status to show what it's found. And you can see we have one card loaded here. So first we're going to check the version of the firmware that's already loaded and that's done using the flint command dash D, and you'll give it the path to the device as discovered above, and then query. And you can see we have version 12.21.2017, and that was released on November 27th of 2017. So the version we have now is quite a bit newer. So next we're going to do the firmware update. We'll use the flint command again, dash D, give it the path name, uh, dash I, and then your firmware file. And then the word burn is the word that's going to write it to the card. And you can see again, the current version is 1221-2010. And the new version we're flashing is 1228-2006. These are firmware numbers. They are not dates, even though they do look like dates. So keep that in mind. So once that firmware is complete, it does say it wants a reboot. So we'll just do a quick reboot. All right, and you can see our server is back online here. So we'll make sure that firmware did save correctly. We'll do an MST start again. MST status, and we'll do a flint dash D device name and query. And now you can see we are running 12.28.2006, which was released on May 15th, 2020. So the next step is we want to change this from InfiniBand mode to Ethernet mode. So if I do an IP ADDR, you'll see we have Eno1 through Eno4, which are the onboard 1 gig. And then we have the two ENP4S interfaces, which are from the 10 gig card. We do not have an interface listed here for the uh, 100 gig card. And that is done using the MLX config command. 
So dash D, device name, and then query. So these are all of the configuration options we can change on that card. Um, we're only interested in one in particular. We want the one that says link underscore type. So we'll do a grep on that. And you'll see link type P1 is set to IB or InfiniBand. Uh, P1 means port one. If you have one of the cards with two ports, you'll have a P1 and a P2, and you can configure those both to be the same, or you can have one be uh, Ethernet and one be InfiniBand. It's pretty much up to you. So in order to make the change, we'll do mlxconfig dash D device name again, and we'll do a set link type P1 equals, and you'll see this says IB or InfiniBand, and then it's got a one in parentheses. So mode one is InfiniBand and mode two is Ethernet. So we'll do link type P1 equals two. And it will ask you to confirm you're setting link type P1 to the new value of ETH or two, which is Ethernet. Apply the configuration change, yes please. And then we'll reboot once again. All right, and our server has begun responding again. So now we can reconnect. So we'll verify it saved that change correctly with MST start, MST status. MST config dash D device name again and query grep link underscore type. Oops, MLX config. What am I doing? MLX config. And it says link type P1 is ETH2 or Ethernet. So we can do clear and we should be able to do IP ADDR. And now we see our new network interface here, ENP 130. So if we do an ETH tool, and we can see all of these supported link modes this card has. It goes all the way up to 100 gigabits. Uh, so it looks like the modes that are supported are 1, 10, 40, 25, 50, and 100 gigabit modes. Um, that is quite a lot of bandwidth. So, And uh, you see it is not actually connected. That is a separate topic for another day. Um, but we have our firmware updated and we have it successfully running in ethernet mode. All right, so that was actually pretty easy. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to leave links to all three of those resource pages down in the video description. And that is the getting started guide, the firmware update tools, and the firmware file itself. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.